Hey guys, this is Anna, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a delicious butter apple pecan bake. This is a lighter version of your traditional apple crisp that you have around the holidays, but this is something I enjoy all year round. So let's get started with making the filling for our um, apple bake. So we're starting with, of course, apples, and you can use Macintosh, Empire, whatever apple you really like, whatever you have laying around is fine. I just happen to choose Macintosh because I like them. And I'm just gonna show you how I slice them, but you don't need a fancy slicer, you can just use a knife, but these are fun to have around, especially in the fall. So I'm just gonna take the core out, and I leave the peels on um, for some insoluble fiber, really good for digestion. So I don't peel my apples when I make my apple bakes. I leave them on. So I'm just gonna get rid of this core here and we have all of our little apple pieces. Now, you can cut them to whatever size you like. Um, some people like sort of a smaller cut um, to make it a little bit more of a mushy fill filling. Some people like them a little thicker. I'm gonna do kind of a medium size, bite size piece for our apples and just chop them up. You can even put a few pieces together like this to make it go quicker. Watch out for your fingers. And we're just gonna put these in a medium sized saucepan. So you can even switch up the sizes doing some smaller, some bigger, however you like it. And get the family involved, get some help. So we have our apples in this saucepan here. So I'm gonna turn our stove on just so things start to get warm and we're gonna put this at about a medium heat or so. Now we need to get some liquid in there so it starts to get bubbly and juicy and yummy and sweet. So we're gonna use some maple syrup and some water. So I'm gonna pour that in there. And maple syrup is one of my go-to sweeteners. We're really staying away from refined sugars, refined flours, all of which have no nutritional value. Everything we're using in this recipe is great for your body. It won't give you that high-low sugar crash and everything that we're using you can find at Harris Teeter, sometimes even Walmart, any of your big box grocery stores. So we did some maple syrup in there to sweeten it, a nice traditional fall flavor. We're also going to use some orange juice and OJ or apple juice are great alternatives to sugar in baking. Um, they give you the sweetness without that um, super high glycemic um, refined sugar. And now our spices. So we're using some um, ginger in here as well as some cinnamon, which is, again, going to complete that apple crisp feel, give it that spice. And the ginger is just going to kind of add that hidden little pop that will give this a little bit of creativity. So we're going to get our spices and our juices and our apples um, all mixing here, warming up to a nice bubbly, bubbly simmer here so we can start to soften things up. And this apple crisp is really unique because things kind of, it's a little more caramelized than just throwing them in the oven, um, getting them softening and kind of blending together over the stove top before you bake it, infuses the flavor more and allows it to be just a little bit more delicious. So we are going to just let the natural juices come out of the apples and create a liquidy, um, nice little, dish here that we're going to use as the base of our um, apple, apple bake. So we're going to leave that alone for about 10 minutes. I might start every few minutes just so it doesn't get too excited at all on its own over there. Um, and we're going to now work on um, the middle part of the bake. So this is the topping. And well, all parts of this pie are my favorite um, of this apple bake are really good. So this is just one of them. I can't really say it's my favorite because I like them all. Um, but we have a few key ingredients that I've already measured out here, but I'll tell you what is going on here. Um, we're gonna mix everything together to make a crumble for the topping. So some of the, you this flour might be new to. It's called almond flour. And I really like this because it is um, not as refined as white flour. It has a lot of fiber. It'll keep you more full than white flour. And it has a really yummy taste when you bake it. So. It just has more of a, um, of course, a nuttier taste. It's a little more of a complex taste than your white refined flour. So not only are we eating healthier, but it tastes better as well. So we're gonna put our almond flour with a little bit of sea salt that I've mixed in here in our bowl here to just get the crumble going. 
and this is going to sit right on top of our nice mushy apple filling. So I'm also going to put, um, again, you'll see that the ingredients we use in all parts of this bake kind of roll over into each other. So we're actually only using a total of probably around 10 or so ingredients. They're just appearing in each part of this bake. So we have some more maple syrup, again, one of my go-to sweeteners. Um, it has more minerals than your white refined sugar. And we're going to pour that in there because we want this to be nice and liquidy. I put a little bit of water in there as well because we don't want this to be too dry. Um, a lot of your flour alternatives, um, almond, coconut, what have you, do require a little bit more liquid because they're a little more dense than white refined flour. But that's okay. So we're also going to put some coconut oil in here. A great, um, a great oil for baking and just in general. So we're going to mix this all together and it's just going to become kind of this, almost like a little batter. Now, what you'll find is that this might look very liquidy. If it's looking too liquidy, what you'll want to do is add a little bit more flour. So things that happen at home. So we're going to put a little bit more flour in here and we're just going to, we don't want it to be too liquidy. We want to have nice little crumbles here that we're going to end up kind of pressing on top of our apple filling. So this is looking perfect to me. It's kind of crumbly, it's kind of like a little batter, and it's going to bake up really nicely. To have almost like a cake sort of crumble feel um, in between the topping and the filling. Again, super nutrient dense, um, crumbly, nice um, topping there. Okay, so let's check on our apples while that, since our topping is done there. And that was really easy. We just threw everything together. Oh, awesome. So these are looking and smelling amazing. It smells like fall and Thanksgiving, and it just makes you want to hang out with friends and family and eat good food. So we can do that. We just want it to be healthy. So we're going to keep mixing this. And you'll notice that we didn't really use any diet sweeteners. We didn't um, try to cut out. We used a little bit of oil. We're using a little bit of the real ingredient in this recipe. So the key is using a little bit of the real thing so it tastes good and of course you're going to want to portion control even healthy things because they still have calories but you'll notice that with the real foods, the real ingredients, you don't need as much to um, make you feel full. You won't keep craving. You'll kind of have your portion and be able to move on when you use real ingredients. So. That is the idea. This is looking amazing. It's really blending together. It's caramelizing. We're kind of creating a nice um, syrupy, thick syrupy filling down here. It's going to be perfect. I love how the apple skins are still on because it's going to give us that insoluble fiber. That's really good for our bellies and for our bodies. So let's give that another couple minutes and just let it get a little bit more caramelized and soft. And while that's going, I want to make the buttery pecan topping because it's amazing and it's super easy and it gives this apple bake just that little bit of creativity that will impress your guests and um, just make it taste really good. So we have a mini food processor here. You could use a blender. You could use um, a food processor. You could actually, if you don't have any of these tools, just mix it up. But I'm going to use this fun little food processor because it's cute and it's easy. You can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond anywhere. So uh, we're going to use some regular chopped pecans and I'm going to put them in the blender first. Put our harder stuff in first here and we're going to use about one and a half little bags and all the portions and ingredients will be available to you so you can replicate this on your own. I know I'm not being too specific with our portions here, but they will be available so that you can replicate this. So we have our pecans in here. Pecans are just super healthy, nice um, healthy fats in there for your body, keeping you feeling full. And they just, of course, have that um, buttery mouthfeel. Pecans are amazing like that. And we're going to combine some unsweetened coconut flakes. And um, even though we're using a lot of coconut oil and coconut flakes, this apple bake won't taste coconutty. Coconut really just achieves like a nice crisp and a nice texture and again provides us with some healthy fat um, in this recipe. So we're going to dump some coconut flakes. And I don't know, I'm never shy about topping. I always think topping is usually the best part of our recipes and dessert. So we're going to just pour this in here. Um, one thing I'll mention is make sure that when you buy your coconut flakes that they do say unsweetened. 
you really want to look for that word because a lot of times we buy coconut flakes and they're laden with sugar and oils, all things that we don't want in our body. So whenever I get a product in general, I flip it over and make sure that I can read everything on the ingredient list, um, I can pronounce it, that it's what I'm looking for, that there's nothing hidden or added. So look at that ingredient list, it's super important. Um, so this one gets an A. We did good with the coconut flakes there. All right, so pecans, coconut flakes, we're making our nice, um, our nice crumble on top. And we're also gonna just dump a little bit of maple syrup in here, just so that it, we can combine it. And then, of course, we're gonna use a little bit of sea salt because who doesn't like sweet and salty? Um, so I just happened to buy this one, but any salt will really do. And um, adding salt isn't going to be bad for our health. It's when we buy um, too, much pro too many products with added salt. So when you add it, just add a pinch. You don't have to overdo it just to give it that quick pop and that's going to draw out some flavors. And of course, we're going to put in some pure vanilla extract, which also could be almond if that's what you have. But most people have vanilla. So I don't know. My mom taught me to never be shy on the vanilla. So we're just going to kind of dump that in there because it does add a nice creaminess and ties everything together. Okay. Awesome. I think we got all our ingredients. It's going to get loud for a minute, but we're really just going to blend this for about, I don't know, chop it for maybe five or 10 seconds. I'm going to grind it, go the other way. Now, I might have overfilled this a tiny bit, but that's okay. I do that all the time. So what I'm going to do is see if I can find a tool in here. Um, that'll help me just to get everything in here and you'll see that it's a perfect little crumbly texture. Now I'm going to give it another blend but I'm quickly going to just check on our apples and these are looking perfect and I'm going to pull these off the stove, turn it off. Um, ooh, those smell good. So I'm just going to give this one more quick blend here just so it's combined. Perfect. Okay, so this topping is great for this recipe, but you could also actually make this and keep it in a mason jar and put a little tablespoon of this on top of some plain Greek yogurt. You could um, do many things with this. You could top a smoothie with it or put it in a smoothie. So these are all raw ingredients that are nutrient dense that when you cook, think, how can I use this um, little batch again? You know, so when we cook once, we want to eat three times. So. Um, this will be something that you could keep around and just have because it is amazing. I would, when I make this, I usually just take a big sample spoonful and taste it because it's yummy. Okay, so by the way, I forgot to mention that our oven is preheating right now. I have it at 350, um, so that's the temperature we're going to want it at. So we are going to use just um, this average size bake pan. This looks like it's an 8 by 8 and I'm going to use our friend Mr. Coconut Oil again and this is just in a spray form and as you can see I love coconut oil because it's just a super versatile oil it doesn't have that really um, coconutty flavor but it's safe at high heats and it's just good for our body good for baking um, we know what we're getting when we use coconut oil so I'm going to spray this pan pretty good and we are going to then um, take our nice apple filling here. It's looking perfect. And we're going to pour it in here. And it should just line the pan. And you can double, triple. This is about, what I'm making right now is about half of what the recipe says. I'm just making a small batch to show you. So if you're having maybe four or five people over, this would be a good, um, portion, but the recipe that I'll be sharing with you that you can view makes enough for about 10 or 12 people. So depending on how big your family is or how big your get togethers will be, um, adjust it. So this topping, we're going to kind of spread easily over here. And this is really just kind of meant to bake in to the apples. It's going to kind of give it like a cakey battery feel. So I'm just going to kind of spread it throughout. And it's really going to end up just kind of melting and blending to give the apples kind of an almondy, nutty, a um, little bit of a savory twist in here. So and the coconut oil will melt and blend and 
make everything just really blend together and we're getting a lot of textures and flavors and again nutrition with our almonds and our apples and our coconut so this is just going to do wonders for your body make you feel great everyone will be happy i hope so we have our topping in there we're going to press that down and like i said i i just kind of blended it in i sort of dolloped it and then blended and pushed it down so we have our nice um, crumbly topping kind of blending in with our mushy apples and now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to bake this for about 15 minutes then we're going to pull it out and we're going to put our topping on um, and then that'll kind of crisp up so let's put this in the oven at 350 for about 15 minutes or so and um, pull it out and finish it up so we can eat it set the timer for 15 all right, I can't wait to try that. All right, it's smelling really good in here and I just heard the timer go off, so I'm gonna get my oven mitt and pull this out. And we're about two thirds of the way there with our pecan buttery apple bake being done. And it's bubbling and looking and smelling amazing. And I'm gonna sneak over here. I'm actually just gonna turn the timer off so we don't have that beeping in our ear while we put our Topping on. This is looking so perfect. All right, I'm gonna close this. And I'm so excited to see that our topping has kind of just fallen nicely into um, the baked apples here. So we're gonna take our coconut pecan topping and just press it kind of along the top here. And we can just kind of chunk it on. It's going to kind of all blend together, um, but the topping will stay on top and it's just going to achieve that nice um, buttery pecan feel. So what you can actually do is just use your hands here and you can take it and sort of just crumble it right on top here. Who needs a spoon anyway? It's easier to use your hands. So I'm going to just make sure everything is covered and I'm telling you this is just going to drive anyone in your house crazy with the smell because it's sweet, it's harvesty, and it's healthy. So you're like, I can eat it. It's good for me. So we're just going to get our nice crumble. And what's awesome about this topping is that most toppings require brown sugar and flour, um, but we didn't use any of that. We just used little bit of maple syrup we used our coconut a nice healthy pecans good fats so this is the perfect amount here and you can um, make this um, a little drier if you want to leave some of the maple syrup and oil out or you can make it wetter depending on how you like it this recipe has a lot of room for flexibility so make it your own you could use almonds instead of pecans you can use um, walnuts, there's a lot of room for flexibility um, as long as you find, follow the general guidelines of kind of what we presented to you. So I'm going to wipe my hands again a little sticky here. Going to make sure every piece of this gets some love from the topping because we don't want anyone being disappointed with a piece without topping. That's the worst. Everyone goes for the piece that has the most topping. All right, so I'm going to just press that down. My hands are kind of sticky, so I'm going to wipe them on this towel here. And I'm just going to take my little wooden spoon here and just make sure it's top. I'm just, this makes me happy. It's looking so good. Um, it's just so, smelling so delicious. It's really going to fill your home with that Thanksgiving-y holiday smell. And it's really easy. So a lot of this stuff you could even prep in advance. You can chop those apples. You can get your batter going. Um, so a lot of this stuff is really make ahead friendly. So we're going to put this back in our oven at 350 um, for about 10 more minutes or so and allow the topping just to crisp up. Um, it's pretty much baked through. All right, so we're going to get that going for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to set the timer. And there's nothing that we use in here that isn't safe for consumption raw. So really, we're just trying to crisp things up, um, warm it, blend it. 
um, by baking it. And it's really going to give us that comforty apple crisp dessert feel without the excess um, calories and refined food. So let's give that 10 minutes and come right back to it and give it a try. It's smelling even more amazing in here and I think we're ready to pull this out. I hear the timer. So let's check out our buttery pecan apple bake. Okay, so I'm going to turn the timer off. I'm going to turn the oven off to be safe. Oh my goodness, this is just going to be a crowd pleaser. Our crumbly topping got nice and brown. Whoop. And I'm going to keep it all in the pan there. Got a little bit excited. And we can see that the coconut and the pecans kind of crisped up a little bit um, in the pan. So I will just give you a nice view of it again here. And everything's nice and bubbly and meshed together. So we have our nice um, healthy apple filling on the bottom, again, free of refined sugars and free of any refined flours. A nice balance of fiber, sweet, salty. In the middle, we have like a nice cake consistency. And on the top, we have our nice buttery crumble. So this is important to portion because it does have calories, even though it's healthy. And it will come out kind of like a, um, like a crumble like a cake crumble. So it's not going to be a perfect um, size or shape and you're just going to want to do the best you can with getting a scoop here and keep it all together. It's still very hot but I'm just going to show it in the bowl here and it will kind of all mesh together um, into a nice sort of dessert feel. We'll put a little more in here for the lucky person who gets to sample this but try to keep the topping towards the top, but everything kind of blends together. And it looks like this, and you might even want to top it with a dollop of Greek yogurt to give it something creamy, um, or a little bit of um, coconut cream, or a tiny bit of um, maybe ice cream if you want, but I think this is satisfying enough by itself. So about a half a cup portion would be good to keep you satisfied and um, enjoying something sweet for the holidays. So I hope you enjoy this buttery pecan apple bake and um, that you stay healthy this holiday season.